I'm in love with the decorative stitches on the Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25. But in this video, we're going to specialize in how to get the perfect satin stitch. Which foot to use, what would it look like if you changed up the threads, maybe did some variegated thread. And also, just a quick reference to our online course called the Stitching Cosmos online course, where we put to work all these great techniques that this machine can do. Every block is a different technique. Some feature different presser feet. You don't have to have the presser feet. You can do a lot of them without, but still learn the concepts and then decide which feet are right for you. So this machine is, even though it's, it's considered a very simple machine, there are tons of stitches that you can uh, select from and be able to dial in the exact stitch length and stitch width. So we've done a ton of video tutorials. You can find the link to the playlist in the description below where you can start from the beginning. But when you're sewing with a straight stitch, let's start from where we're going to start and how we're going to get to the perfect satin stitch. Traditionally, you're going to be using the A presser foot. So I'm going to explain the difference between the A foot and the B foot and why you want to use the B foot for satin stitching. This is great for applique or just creating your own unique uh, looks or shapes on your fabric. One of the optional presser feet that I recommend to all my students, probably usually one of their first or second feet that they purchase for this machine, is the optional clear open toe foot. I'm going to just open it up so as I'm explaining the B foot, what the difference is. So as you can kind of see, it is completely open, so there's no bar in front of the needle. There are some lines to help you kind of stay lined up. There's those little red mark in the center and two lines across, so you always know where your needle is going to be coming down on your fabric. But here is what we're going to be doing. As we take a zigzag, so we're going to be switching over to the zigzag setting, we are going to shorten it so it's really, really dense, close together. And when you do that, you need to have a place underneath the foot for that density, the, the thick stitch that you're creating, to kind of roll out the back and not get stuck. So here's what happens if you left the A foot on. You can see there's a little cutout, but there's not much. That's designed for your straight stitch, so you get a perfect straight stitch. As we start playing around with some of the decorative stitches like we did here, we were shortening that stitch length so much that it became very thick and with a regular presser foot it would pile up. So switch on over, put on the B foot, that will be great. The open toe foot has the, I know it's hard to see, but it has that same cutout that you're seeing on this metal foot. But I'm going to sew with this so you can actually see what I'm stitching while I'm stitching and also how to adjust all the settings to kind of dial in what you're working on. A reminder, you do need to have something underneath your fabric, such as stabilizer, something you can remove, like a tearaway is fine, but you need something to help make sure that that fabric doesn't get um, kind of wrinkled or puckered, and that is very common. People are like, oh, I don't need anything. Even two layers of fabric sometimes isn't enough when you have something that is so, so thick. So here's how we're going to start off. We're going to be starting with maybe a stitch length re between one and two, okay? Then as we start to stitch, we're going to slowly just tick, tick, tick this dial down between one and zero. Now, if you get to zero, you're not going anywhere. You're just going to make a attack, which by the way, if you need a bar tack, that's how you do it. But we don't want to get too close that the stitches don't move forward, but we also don't want to be too far away that the stitches leave a gap. There's a happy middle. Now, depending on your thickness of thread, now I've switched over to a variegated thread to give us some fun colors here. And it's not that it's a little thicker, but it is a little thicker than a traditional sewing thread. So if you had a thinner thread, you will we'll be shortening it more than if we had a thicker thread. That's why I always say to test and then also just kind of just slowly find where the satin stitch becomes the perfect satin stitch. You also need a stitch width. Okay, so what is normal? Somewhere between two, three, and four is probably good. Now you can do a super wide satin stitch, yes, at full on six, but I'm gonna just start somewhere in the middle here, around three and a half. But if I start to maybe narrow or widen 
the results, it's because I'm twisting this knob at the top, so stitch width. So it's kind of fun to like learn what stitch length does and stitch width does by doing this actual test. And by the way, denim is a great fabric to test on. It has a little body, so usually one layer of stabilizer is just right. So let's zoom in and let's take a look at how to dial in the perfect satin stitch. At this point, we just need to start to sew. Let's just kind of see how wide the stitch is. Do you like that width? We're going to start with that width. And you can see that it's jumping fairly quickly towards us, leaving almost, it's more of a zigzag right now. Okay, so I'm going to slowly start to turn my stitch length towards one. That's one. You can see there's still a little gap between it all. But as I go a little further, just a little bit each time, you can see how it becomes nice and solid. Now, there's a point where we won't have the fabric moving through any further, but at least if you have the right foot on, you can definitely see that it's going to have room for it to move. So let's go ahead. How about let's make it a little wider before we get to the end of our fabric. There's wider and there's narrower. And let's just kind of see the results, see if we're getting what we're looking for. Ah, now see, now that I've turned it, I'm really still starting to see, I still have some of the fabric showing through. So I know I need to really make that stitch length just a little bit more closer to zero than what I'm at right now. So a couple more clicks. Okay, that's where it's starting to like not want to feed. I've gone a little too far. So if you do this, just go ahead and come forward off that little bump you've created. Back off one little tiny click of stitch length and I think you'll have it perfectly dialed in. So here's our wider one and here's our narrower one. If we go all the way to zero, we get what? Straight stitch, I know, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. But here, you can even do this. You can go wide to narrow and literally make kind of these little circles while you're sewing. Okay, let's take a look and see the results. Oh, fun, fun. And this is why I love variegated thread because we can kind of really play around with some fun colors and get the results we want. So I hope you'll take some time with your machine. I highly encourage everyone to make like a little stitch book and that way you can sew out each of the stitches kind of like how we started over here. And a stitch book with this machine is gonna be like one piece of fabric. So you're sewing out each row. You can try each stitch with a slightly different width and length and kind of have all different settings. You can have three, four different settings for each stitch. But then that way you'll You'll see what the stitches look like. You'll find that they look 10 times better on fabric than they do just pictured right over here on that dial. So give that a try. If you haven't taken time to sew out all the stitches, pick up some fun thread and start stitching. We'll put a link to how to make your own stitch book right here at the end of this video. And if you're interested in that Stitching Cosmos online course, there are free videos that you can watch to see if this course might be right for you in the YouTube description below.